I like to discuss topics related to infrared photography. In this video, I'll take a look at DxO Photo Lab as a raw editor. I'll look at version 4, which was recently released. DxO is also the home of the Nick Collection, a series of specialized plugins. At the end of the video, I'll tell you who DxO Photo Lab is good for and who it's not good for. So Photo Lab is available on the Mac and Windows. It offers a 30-day free trial and the regular cost is 129 US dollars. So let's take a look at the interface. The interface is divided into two main sections. There's the photo library where you can do your organization and then there's customize where you can actually edit photos. So the first thing I'll point out is that DxO does not support images taken with the Fujifilm X-Trans sensor. You can see that noted by this exclamation mark here. And even if you convert one of those photos to a DNG file, it still cannot be read by DxO. DxO can only work with Bayer sensor files. So let's take a look at a file. I had to dig into my archives and pull out an old photo taken with a Canon camera that I had converted many years ago. And let's take a look at the customize where you would do your developing. On the right hand side of the screen, there is the panels that you actually use to manipulate your images. So we've got light, color, detail, geometry. These are also there's some shortcuts up here you can use to jump into each of these sections. You can also search for them, look for favorites, or look for active connections. Something to be aware of with DxO is the workspace controls. There's two workspaces available. There's a standard workspace, which gives you kind of a, uh, the, a limited view of what's available. And so a number of panels, the standard panels. And then there is the advanced, which gives you that full breakdown of all the panels that are available. So the first thing that I want to do with this image is do a white balance. So I can come over to the right hand side. And if you don't see it, you could click on the color group. But here is the white balance section. I can open that up. I can toggle this little uh, control here to enable it. And then I can pick a white balance or I can use this picker to select a white balance. So I'll pick something on the left edge of this tree and that gives me a pretty good white balance. The, you can see that the slider has a range here from about 2000 Kelvin to 50,000 Kelvin. So that's a, a pretty good range for, uh, for making a selection. But if you want a little bit more control, uh, you can actually come down to this color rendering section, open this up, and you will see one of the, there's a number of categories for how you can render your image. So you could, there's different renderings for body type or film emulations. You could load an ICC profile or you can load a DCP profile. Any profiles that you created for Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to shift the color temperature and improve your ability to white balance an infrared photo, you can load those profiles here in DxO as well. So if I select that, I've loaded up a profile that I created specifically for this camera, and you may notice that there was a little bit of a shift uh, in the color. If I turn this color rendering on and off, there's on, there's off, you can see there's a little bit of a shift. Um, so I think that you can actually get a little bit of an improvement with your white balance by creating a, a DCP profile with the Adobe DNG profile editor and then using that to improve your white balance in DxO. I'll put a link at the top of the screen where you can get instructions on how to do that. The one downside to this is that it will only read DCP files, so profiles with a color shift in them. But if, if you have a profile with a LUT that's used to swap colors, then that's actually a different file format. That's an X. XMP file, and that cannot be read by DxO. So you can't use the LUT-based profiles, but you can use a profile with a bit of a, a color temperature shift. So how are we going to adjust our colors then? So let's uh, take a look here. So what we'll do is we'll come down to the HSL, and we'll open this up. There's three methodologies that you would typically use to swap colors with uh, an infrared photo. The first being a channel mixer, where you're actually mapping reds to blues and blues to reds. The second being an invert color. And then the third being a hue shift. Unfortunately, the only option that's available in DxO is the hue shift. So we'll do that in the HSL panel. So I'll come down here and I will grab this knob on the right hand side and I'll swing it all the way around to the left hand side. And you can see that does a pretty good job of swapping my colors. It would be nice if I had some kind of a numerical reading here so I could see exactly 
the effect I'm having if I wanted to do exactly 180, but you don't have a, a numerical reading. You'll just kind of have to eyeball it. But then, of course, you can also play with it as well to see what kind of a color impact you want to have. So that's how you will swap your colors in DxO. Something to be aware of is that because we use the hue to swap the colors, any other hue adjustments that we make will be reversed. So if I want to make an adjustment here, I might want to use this picker. Uh, let's say I want to adjust the sky. I can pick the color of the sky. And when you do that, you'll see that it will actually select this orange color. Um, and then I could make adjustments there. So just be aware that your colors will be reversed, but you can use the picker to easily distinguish which color you like. I could use the picker to grab something in this tree. And then now I could make adjustments to that color as well based on the selection I've made with the picker. So some other things you want to be aware of with color you can go into color accentuation. I'll turn that on and that's where we can adjust vibrancy, overall vibrancy and overall saturation of my colors. And you could also adjust colors in the tone curve by adjusting those uh, individual channels. So this is the full channels, but if I switch to the red channel, this will have an impact on the blues, the overall blues in the image uh, and, and vice versa. So you can actually make adjustments to colors here in the curve tone as well. If I want to make an image black and white, then what I can do is come back down to the color accentuation and I can simply reduce the saturation of that color. In addition, the other option that I have is if I come over to the left side, I'll minimize some of these panels and open up the preset editor. There is a section of black and white presets and so you can apply some of these presets. Just double click to apply a preset and then you can see what that will look like. Go back up to advanced and I will undo this by clicking the last item in the history uh, to pull that back. Okay, so some things you can do with contrast. So there's a contrast option here that you can turn on in the light section and I can adjust contrast and micro contrast. There's also an adjustment called the DxO Clearview Plus and you can use that to affect contrast as well. DxO offers local adjustments. You can click this button up here at the top of the screen and then I can click or right click on the screen and then I get a variety of local adjustments. So there's a brush tool that I can use to apply uh, changes to the screen via a brush and then once I do that you'll see I have the kind of the same interface for the control points that you would see from the Nick collection. So you see those control points here and then you can make a number of adjustments right here on screen. Click from different areas so I've got color options, uh, detail, so there's a variety of things you can do here. The other thing you can do in local adjustments is I could do a graduated filter so I can drag down and do a graduated filter and then I'm presented with the same interface and I can also do a control point which is more of a, of a radial filter so I can drop that down to affect a portion of the image and then make adjustments using these control points. There is a repair tool available. It's this bandage icon that's available at the top of the screen. You can click that and then make adjustments. This is more like the spot removal tool in, in Lightroom as opposed to the, the healing tool in uh, Photoshop. So you're not going to quite get a full-on healing brush, but you can make some adjustments. So if I find this branch here at the top of the screen and I want to get rid of this, then I could highlight this and you pick another portion of the screen to replace through a clone or heal. Uh, and this works pretty well, although I have noticed some challenges with the edge of the screen. So you can see it doesn't really quite work very well at the edge of the screen, which is unfortunate because that has a tendency of where I want to use this feature the most. So let me try deleting this and I'll try another attempt. So I'll just pick a smaller portion. I'll just do this branch here and I'll go clear way off screen. Uh, and then I will pick up another area that picked up something to the right here. And I can ensure that this is got a full coverage of what it's covering, but you can see there's still some challenges here in, in what it's getting. So the repair tool is, is, has some challenges. Going back to the preset panel on the left-hand side of the screen, one of the things that's nice about the preset panel is that you could use it to save your hue swap and your white balance to improve your infrared workflow. So I could create a new preset by clicking on this new preset icon, and then I can create a new preset. Let's call it, um, let's just call it swap. I'll hit save and so now I can see my new preset here is available. One of the things that's that's interesting about DxO, it's a little awkward with the presets, is that you can't actually select what's going into this preset when you create it, but what you can do 
is once it's created, I can edit it and then I can define what I want to be eliminated from it. So once I'm in this edit preset mode, I can see these checkboxes have appeared on the right hand side of the screen and these allow me to define what I want or don't want to be included in this. So let's say I just want to work on the, the color swap. Uh, let's say that uh, I don't want the repair tool changes involved, so I'll uncheck that. Let's see, I don't want the local adjustments, so I will uncheck the local adjustments. So I'm, I want to eliminate those changes. Now I can come back over here and hit save, and then those changes, you can see that the, the brush tool that I had made here and the repair tool adjustments that I made, those are no longer included in that preset, and so now that preset is available to be saved elsewhere. I find that the, the preset interface is a little bit clunky. It's hard once I, I can make these edits, but it's not clear, you know, the save button doesn't work really well. Sometimes you gotta click edit again to get out of this mode. You, you certainly can save presets, and I've done it successfully, but the interface is maybe a little bit slow and a little bit clunky. And let's try to apply that to another image. So I'll go over to this other image that's available and I'll double click it, we'll open it up, and then I will apply the swap. And now that's applied the same preset to another image. So who is DxO Photo Lab good for? If you already own DxO Photo Lab, you can certainly use it for infrared photography. It has good white balance settings that you can find here. And under color rendering, you can pull up a DCP profile, and that's very helpful as well. You can also do easy swaps of color with the HSL panel. You can use the main white channel for a global adjustment, and then you can use other channels for modifying individual colors. If you like the Nick collection and want to stay within the same ecosystem, then Photo Lab could make sense for you. If you're curious about Photo Lab, then use the free trial and see if you like the software. Who is DxO Photo Lab not good for? Well, it's not good for Fuji film shooters who have cameras with the X-Trans sensor. Uh, since there's no support for those X-Trans RAW files and there's no support even if those are converted to DNG. If you prefer to use the channel mixer method or the invert method for color swapping, then you won't find those available in DHO. If you have a lean heavily on the repair tool or healing tools, then uh, there's some challenges here with the healing tools, especially around the edges of the screen. Also, there's no panorama stitching available in DxO, so that doesn't come available with this. You can get HDR that's supported in the NIC collection, so you'll need the NIC collection for HDR. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Thanks.